love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. All right, next one. All you got to do is raise your hand. Get, do what? 311. Let me look at it before we get started on it. Page 311. If you're tired of the Lord of your sin, let Jesus come into your heart. If you desire a new life to begin, let Jesus come into your heart. Just now your doubtings give o'er, just now reject Him no more. Just now throw open the door, let Jesus come into your heart. Verse 4. If you would join the glad songs of the blessed, let Jesus come into your heart. If you would enter the mansions of rest, let Jesus come into your heart. Just now throw open the door, let Jesus come into your heart. Took me for a second there, Gwen. I, I nearly didn't know that one or how it got started, but anyway. Next one. 136. 1st and last verse. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are you garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Okay, Neil, what you got? 192. 192. Just remember, if I don't know it, you get to lead it. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. Verse 2, no more dying there. We are going to see the King. No more dying there. We are going to see the King. No more dying there. We are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the King. No more crying there. We are going to see the King. No more crying there, we are going to see the King. No more crying there, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, 
hallelujah, we're going to see the King. All right, one more. 193. Just turn all the way over one more page. We'll sing the first and last verse. <clears throat> one day when heaven was filled with His praises, one day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my example is He. Living He loved me, dying He saved me, buried He carried my sins for away. Rising He justified, freely forever. One day He's coming, oh glorious day. One day the trumpet will sound for His coming. One day the skies with His glories will shine. Wonderful day, my beloved one bringing glorious Savior, this Jesus is mine. <coughs> Living He loved me, dying He saved me, buried He carried my sins far away. Rising He justified, freely forever. One day He's coming, oh glorious day. One more and we're going to call it the end. 141. Now this is not Stump the, the music leader. Alright, the old rugged cross. Sing the first and last verse. <clears throat> On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. <clears throat> so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. To the old rugged cross I will ever be true, its shame and reproach gladly bear. Then he'll call me someday to my home far away where his glory forever I'll share. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. We got news this afternoon that Brother Clarence Casebear has passed on, so let's all keep him in our prayers as we go on through the night. I do Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you for this day. Just thank you for the many blessings you've given us. Lord, I thank you for this church, and I thank you for my church family. Lord, they mean so much to me, Lord. Lord, I thank you for Brother Clarence for the life that he led. And I, Lord, I just pray that you'd be with his family during his passing, Lord, just to comfort them that only that you know how. Lord, I want to lift Brother Gary up too as he brings our 
message tonight, Lord, I just pray that the, the words he brings, we can apply it to our lives, Lord, that we can uh, just uh, be a better Christian and be a better servant for you. We ask you things in Jesus' name pray. Amen. They get turned on. I'm up. I'm headed that way. Again, good news and bad news. Bad news, I'm here, Steve's not. Good news is... I can't think of any right now. Not for y'all. For me, I've got lots of good news, but... The men who was at the men's breakfast last Saturday get a rerun. I don't know. I, I kept thinking about what I should talk about. And I thought I'd talk about something I just talked about that I thought was important that a lot of people need to hear. It may not be very popular, but I think people need to hear it. Before I get started, he mentioned uh, Brother Clarence. You know, something else going on, too, and I don't... I don't like it's political. You know, one of the uh, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court died. A Christian. I think that's something we need to pray about uh, fervently. Because that one man can change the whole makeup of the Supreme Court. It could be a devastating blow to Christianity as we know it. Because let's face it, uh, most of them aren't. And they control a lot of things that happens to us. And we're already under attack somewhat. <clears throat> I'm going to ask some questions. Some of them I want y'all to answer. Because we're not going to be here long. Why is the church here? And that's for y'all. Anybody? Why is the church here? That's what we're going to talk about, serving. It's worship. Uh, fellowship for believers. I think we need, as Terry mentioned in, in his class, you know, we need to get recharged. You know, I've never understood a person who... Uh, since I've been a Christian for 30 years. Where do you go to church? I don't go to church. I don't listen to anybody on TV. I don't listen to anybody on the radio. I don't need that. That's between him and God, I guess. Okay, we, we determine why the church is here. What are you here for? Is that anybody else? Get refueled. That's right. I think it's all of those. In Joshua 24, and I didn't have them, I didn't put it up here because that way we take a little more time looking for things. We'll be in here 10 minutes instead of 5. <laughs> Joshua 24, 14, and 15 says, if I can find it. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your forefathers worshipped beyond the river in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your forefathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites or those or whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we'll serve the Lord. There's a lot of things you can put in there besides gods. Some of our gods are a little different than what he's talking about there. Some of our gods are ourselves, our money, our jobs, our kids, our grandkids. Don't we start like that crap, Gary? That's true. Our parents, our houses, our cars. That's become gods to a lot of people. We talked about this morning in Sunday school a little bit. You know, uh, 
the difference in a need and a want. We've lost what that is. We really have. We've lost the difference in knowing what a need and a want is. We don't have wants anymore. We have needs. I need that. Well, that's not what God's saying. <clears throat> In my Bible, when I look it up, the word serve, service, served, servant, it gives 96 references to it. You look it up on Bible Gateway, I believe there's 289. Probably pretty important, isn't it? What's the definition of serve? The men at breakfast might remember. What is the definition of serve? Anybody want to? There's lots of definitions. You're not going to be wrong. Do for others. That's a good one. What else? Anybody? The one I picked out that I really liked. The definition of serve. Be of use. Are you being of use? To who? You know, the reason I come up with this stuff, and I tell the men at the breakfast, it's easy for me to come up with stuff like this because it's about me. I need this. I don't serve like I should. I never have. You know, and that's what I told them. I've never had somebody come up to me, dang it, Gary, you need to slow down in church. You're doing too much. You need to back off and rest a little bit. Concentrate on your job a little more. I don't have people do that to me. Do you? Some of you do a lot. Well, what can I do in a church? What is there to do in a church? To serve in a church, what do you have to do? Well, you've got to be a preacher. Like Steve. Song leader like Don. Youth leader like John. That's only we can serve in a church. Right? Oh. Sound like I'm home. Wrong. So you need to be in one of the spots that people see you doing something, right? Teaching? Maybe? Okay, be a deacon. You're not serving unless you're a deacon, right? What is there to do in a church? What is there not to do in a church? Well, there's a few things. I mean, if I can find them. Uh, you can teach. You can cook. You can clean. You can donate. People, church don't don't run by itself without money. I'm sorry. So that's all that church talks about is money. This church don't, unless you go to a business meeting. Really, really talks about it. But the church not going to operate without it. You can greet people. You can witness. You can encourage people. You can mow grass for somebody. You can paint somebody's house. Remember we done that? Uh, for some, you can just be an example. There's a lot of people through my life that, that I can remember that was really good examples for me. No matter what came about, they were still examples. That learned... That taught me in a lot of ways to sometimes somewhat curb my temper, use that as an excuse to uh, make a very bad example of myself when things go bad. If I mastered that, no, I hadn't mastered that either. A lot closer than I used to be, but no, I haven't mastered it. Uh, get involved. Get others involved. 
Bring other people to church. That's serving. Just be part of it. Play a piano. Play an instrument. Run the sound. You don't see no heads sticking up back there. I guarantee you they're back there. You'll never see them. But they're back there. You know, I, I appreciate those kind of people. Uh, I told the story, and I told the men, I tell it again. I had a pastor say one time, there was a man that went to church there. He, you know, he didn't get involved a whole lot. He was a very quiet, very shy man. He said when somebody died, this was years ago, back when we'd done things like that, years ago, when somebody died, he went over to their house and picked up all their shoes, took them home, polished them, and brought them back. That was a really gloriful job, wasn't it? But it had to be done. Back then, people didn't go to a funeral with nasty shoes. And not many people wanted to do things like that. We're here to serve. I want to say something that some people might not agree with. This church is not here for you. And this church ain't here to serve you. There are some exceptions to that. I think if you're a new Christian, if you're a widow, orphan, you've lost somebody to a death, you're sick, you need prayer, that's different. But when you become a Christian, a member of a church, not just this church, a church is not there for you. You're supposed to be there for the church. That's a hard concept for some people to get, to get in their head. Well, I go to the church because I need... Went to a Sunday school class years ago, my and I did. We went to a pretty good-sized church in, in Hobbs. There was like 600 in Sunday school. And there was a, a young lady who went to our class that every week, when it come time for, for prayer requests, she had one. And it was always for her. Some of the silliest things I've ever come about. Finally, one of the leaders, I think even nicely, talked to her about it. You know? Because I'm not talking about two or three Sundays in a row. I'm talking about 20 or 30 Sundays in a row. It hurt her feelings. She didn't come back for a little while. But she started coming back. People, we need to know. This church is not here to serve you. It's to be part of you and for you to serve. There's lots of things to do in the church. The showing up is one of them. Being part of it. You know. Did Jesus say, sit down here. I need my feet washed. Y'all need to wash my feet. Y'all need to help me with the robe here, boys. Got some people coming after me tonight. Y'all need to protect me. Jesus came to serve. One of the big deals that, that come about, what, 10 years ago, what would Jesus do? One thing he wouldn't do was he wouldn't tell you to serve him when he was alive. I think sometimes we, we worry too much about ourselves and not others. That's a very difficult thing to do. Because we have problems, don't we? From the youngest one sitting over here to the oldest one sitting back there. We got problems. And I say, don't misunderstand. The church is here for you when you need it. But you ought to be here for it when it needs you. And that's all the time. Uh, Matthew 20, 25 through 28. Wait a minute, I know it's in the Bible here somewhere. 20, 25 through 28.
Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. And to give his life as a ransom for many. That kind of tells it all, doesn't it? The more you do for others, the higher you become in his, in his eyes. Now what's the key to all that? You don't get the glory for it. You don't get the credit. You don't come in and tell everybody what you do in the church. I've done this and I've done that and here's what I do and if it wasn't for me it's all for naught if that's what you're doing it for. There's nothing wrong with telling somebody they're appreciated. There's nothing wrong with that. But a person doing something because that's what they want, there is something wrong with that. Our human nature doesn't like that, does it? You know, in our jobs, we want to be recognized. In our homes, we want to be recognized. And as little as I do around the house, I sure point it out tomorrow when I do do something. It's not easy to serve. Sometimes. Sometimes it is easy. I think it's easier for some than it is others. Uh, like I say, there's lots of things. I mentioned politics earlier. Tur turn to Romans 13.6. Oh, you don't have to. I'll read it to you. This is also why you pay taxes for the authorities are God's servants. Really? Who give their full time in governing. Not much anymore, are they? But in a way they are. Who puts them there? Who puts the government officials where they are. We do. Now the Christians control Congress and, 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 and the executive branch. Don't look like it much, does it? I believe, and, and, and you might not believe this, I believe if every Christian got out and voted in this country, and refused to vote for anybody that was not a Christian, a true Christian, I don't think that candidate could ever get beat. If every Christian voted, I don't think that candidate could get beat. Think of what this country would be like if true Christians ran it. No, I don't think every school would be a religious school. A true Christian gives everybody a choice, don't they? What does Jesus say? You go into a town, you tell them the way it is. If they don't agree, what do you do? Knock the dust off your feet and go. We're not here to cram it down their, their throats. But that's part of serving people. Is telling people about Jesus. How many of you are too embarrassed to pray in a restaurant when you're fixing to eat because everybody's watching?
No, they don't care. They don't care. But how many of you too too scared, embarrassed, ashamed to do that? You'll do it when there's a group of religious people with you, or maybe at home, but you won't do it in public. That's another service. Letting people know that you're not ashamed to pray to Jesus in public. I ain't talking about stand up. All right, everybody, I'm going to pray here. You want me to bless your food while I'm at it? If you ain't choking on it. That's not what I mean. Y'all know what I mean. Uh, lastly, let's go to 2 Timothy. Uh, 2, 23-26. Flee from evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments because you know what they produce, quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not quarrel. Instead, he must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. Those who oppose him must be, those who oppose him, he must gently instruct in the hope that God will grant them repentance and leading them to knowledge of the truth and that they will come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil who has taken them captive to do his will. You want to not serve? You want other people's not to serve? Start the quarrels. Start the fights. You know, I don't agree with lots of things. If every time I didn't agree with Myra, I started a fight, well, I wouldn't be here tonight because she'd have done kill me. Think about that. I'm not saying don't choose your battles. I'm saying don't be foolish and start quarrels in the church about serving or anything else. I didn't say agree with everything either. There's nothing wrong with saying I don't agree with that. But to start a fight about it ain't worth it, people. Not most of the time, anyway. Now, if, if somebody's getting away from God, that's different. Then sometimes you do have to get a little firmer and let them know. But y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, I'm, I'm so glad to see, you know, we've, we've gone to two services. Uh, I miss seeing some people because of the two services. But I'm so glad to see that both of them have people in it. And I hope people are glad that we have a church like this. That they're proud to be involved in a church like this. And that they're willing to get off that bench and do something about it. The church ain't here for you. You're here for the church. That's all I got. Thank you. And here comes Terry. Jesus, I surrender all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him 
in his presence daily live I surrender all I surrender all all to thee my blessed Savior I surrender all Just remember all the activities that are going to be going on this week. And uh, uh, give Steve a hard time when he gets back. When you see him, he's, at, he's taking off tonight for his anniversary. And we want to congratulate him for 35 years. Let's all grab hands and let's sing uh, In the Name of the Lord. strength in the name of the Lord the, their power in the name of the Lord there is hope in the name of the Lord Bl blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord y'all have a good week